This is a, a photograph of uh, Shuttington by uh, Tamworth I took a couple of summers ago. Got a nice bit of detail on the hill up there we can work with. The uh, foreground's a bit boring so I might um, just put a little path in there or something just to make it a bit more exciting. So I've got all my usual kit here. Here's the palette. It's uh, just a very lightweight plastic tray. I've got all the colours in the usual places, ultramarine, lemon yellow, pines grey, lizard crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. Got me a uh, couple of watercolours I use, um, brushes, large hike, number three rigger, three quarter inch flat. I got a uh, just a piece of plastic card here used for scraping. Again, I use the palette knife as well for scraping out masts and boats or whatever. A uh, water jar with a nice lip on. Take the excess water off the brush. Tissue in case I want to lift out. And uh, 15 by 11 Fabriano watercolour paper weighs £130. So another quick look at the photo before I uh, crack on with it. I'm going to start off large ache, and this is just clear water giving onto the paper, just giving it a good soaking before I start putting the paint on. Just helps it stretch evenly, so even though it's, it's not the thickest paper in the world, it's not going to crinkle all over the place. So, with that wet, now into raw sienna and just just put on very roughly, no particular order to it. You could do this blindfolded if you want. Clean the brush. Next, ultramarine. Just straight ultramarine on its own. And just brush that in from the one side. And also, while you're doing this, if you see any bits of paint running down, just catch them with the brush as you're going across. Darker. I'll do for that. Now I'm using the same two colours, mixing them together to get a sort of greeny, greeny sort of colour. And I'm going to start. The horizon's about up here. So I'm just going to start something like that. And I'm just going to try and just keep varying it as I go along. Nice those ones there. And then we've got some houses. I'll put those in in a minute. I'll just put these in first. And just work that along just to the edge of the paper. Yeah, I think I'll put the houses in now. So to do that, I'm going to have to dry it first. Give it a quick dry. Well, uh, as long as they're all there about, it'd have to be bone dry. But the paper's stretched now, so it's just a case of pull it tight, refix it over on this right hand side, and we're ready to go again. So. Pile it back in hand, pick up the three quarter inch flat, wet the, uh, we'll give it a good um, wetting, there's got to be a better word than that. Um, raw sienna, same colours again. And just very simply, I'm just going to put the roof in and then in fact, I'll put the. Uh, there's about three houses there, so I'll go one, two. I'm not going to do them exactly the same as the photograph, basically, because this way is easier. One, two, three. And then if I just suggest the other part of the roof, like right there, and then there, and then just like a little. Put some windows up there. And some chimneys on it. And then 
Mais euh... je sais pas, il y a quoi que. Look how windy is on that side. That's all we need, really. I mean, that, that there looks. I haven't put many uh, strokes in, but they look like houses. And remember, all, all I'm doing here is creating an impression. So now I've got that in, I'm just going to put the uh, bits of um, grass in front of that now. And there's some little uh, fence posts, so I'm going to get this in. Fairly dark. Well, not too dark. Maybe switch to the um, while that's still wet. There's some little fences up there. I'm just scratching some fence posts. It's not much, but these little man made things just help add a bit of a character to the thing. Just need to wet this over here. But that's pretty watery now, so. You'll see how this doesn't come off as well. See, there's too much water. See that, there was more paint there, less water. There, there's too much water, and you can see how it doesn't work so well. But I'm going to clean the brush, and I'm just going lemon yellow. Lemon yellow, a bit of paint, a bit of a uh, raw sienna, and just putting this hill bit, just pull down. Remember the hill's going down, so use downward strokes. You might not think it makes any difference, but it, it, it does, believe me. Now these trees on the left hand side. A bit darker, they need a bit darker now to contrast. Always looking for contrasts. You can see that, that comes off quite nicely again, so you see I'll make it even darker. There's a bit of Payne's grey. And there's these trees up here still. Just put the ones on the top first. Maybe a touch of red just to change out a little bit. And a little tree, maybe just just lightly with your fingernail. Just suggest a few chunks up there. Now few more trees down the bottom. And then there's some light red burnt umber. And there's going to be some little fence posts there, so just very light touch. Just to dab, I just dabbed into the uh, the ultramarine. You see how much how it darks. When you want to make a colour dark, don't automatically go straight to the Payne's grey. Ultramarine does a very good job as well of uh, darkening your your colours. So with that in, again, I'm just going to switch to the uh, card again, and there's. There's these fence posts that run the whole, almost the whole width of the sea now. Maybe not put them everywhere, but just, just a few here and there. So I'm going to clean the brush. And we're always working from light to dark, so once you've got dark on your brush, if you want to make it light again, clean the brush. You can always go from, you don't have to clean it when you want a darker colour, obviously. When you want it lighter, don't try and just, if you've got dark, don't just go straight into your lighter colours and expect it to uh, come out well on the paper. I'm just going to give that a quick sweep. Raw sienna, again, just straight across. Again, try and get it all in in one stroke. Always looks better. The fewer strokes you can use, the better your painting will look. Now, I said I wanted to put a path in the foreground, so I'm going to go. I'm going to clean the brush again, and I'm going to go 
light red and ultramarine. Uh, and I think I'll have it sort of, they always look best when they're sort of weaving and out and I'm going to sort of come from this side and then just again I'm not going, I'm just, um, so if you watch I'm trying not to paint over the same piece of paper more than, same area more than once and it just leaves all these little variations of colour just help help make it more interesting. So again, just continuing round out, just coming down here. And again, I'm just going to try and vary it as much as I can now as I'm coming down. Burnt umber, ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, just constantly varying it. side of the path. Now I just want to darken that up and then I'll uh, just try and emphasize that path a bit more by putting a few little little rocks and pebbles and stuff along the edge of it. Just using a piece of plastic card and just scraping. And I can do this straight away, I haven't got to wait for the paint to dry or anything because I used, so if you look at my palette you can see I'm using very little water and lots of paints. So I don't have to wait for it to dry when I go in scraping, I can just do it straight away. We just flick up a few little bits of, bits of grass and what have you. And again, give nice and dark now, ultramarine, burnt umber, and then just just bits of bits of grasses growing here and there. Again, just. Trying to keep it interesting. There's nothing more boring than just one plain flat wash of colour. Just keep varying the colour, it makes it so much more interesting. And the brush is very dry now, so I can I know I can go up right up here and I know there's not much paint gonna come off the brush and it's just gonna suggest those just little bits of grass. Just very faint little bits of grass. If the brush was wet now, it'd be coming off in great big clumps of paint, and it'd look a total mess. So I, can, I know I can go up there now, and there's hardly anything going to come off the brush because it's so dry. As soon as I dip it into the water, it's going to come off a lot more. Um, so that's most of the painting in there. I'll give it a quick dry. a bit of life to it boy I'll just switch to the number three rigger number three rigger into that sort of tree colour lemon yellow pines grey and I'll just put a just a couple of birds I'll put three birds up here just flying around again nice and dark now any anything just take a dark colour off your uh, off your palette and just stick your signature in the corner. I'll call that one done. 
So there's the finished painting. Now let's just compare it to the photograph. You see I haven't changed things around too much. I've, I've kept the composition very very similar. You can just see the houses there at the top of the hill. But just look how uh, how few strokes you need to suggest them. Or you know what I mean. It, it was just a quick quick roof, a few windows and a chimney, and it just gives the impression of those houses. There wasn't a lot happening in the foreground here. Quite plain. Just a simple path. Just really helps lead the eye, and gives the gives the viewers somewhere to uh, to look. And you can see just the variation in colour on the trees and just those little fence posts just help add a bit of character and an interest to the scene. And just constantly varying the colour. Even a you know a flat boring piece of land like that, just just keep varying the colour and you can make make almost anything look interesting. You see how the, the distant trees are putting using the same colours as the sky, as well as the houses, to help push them right back into the distance. Just saving the, uh, the, the stronger tones for the foreground. Well I hope you like that, thanks for watching, keep practising and I'll see you again soon.